have imagined that the flower which has been cited as Brahma's lotus in Purana, the sacred ancient literature of Hinduism, has got anything to do with a story of a rather sinister background? I will unfold one such story here along with every phases of bloom as part of my first video of the new series. But wait, I know it's not our favorite word in today's world, exemplified by a maddening pace. Nature often teaches us though to experience such true moments of stasis before the rapture. Especially for an extremely rare species of thistle tribe of flowering plant with exceptional medicinal values that blooms usually in the alpine Himalayan habitats and considered as utmost sacred and auspicious, the very presence of which symbolizes purity and divinity, waiting is like that stoking of cold blue fires in a fuzzy winter night. It only warms you up to experience the deliciously transformative power of beauty. Fabled to bestow divine blessings on mortals who can see Brahma Kamal bloom, pilgrims, researchers, sadhus, savants, explorers travel at a height of 4,500 to 5,700 meter towards the upper reaches of alpine meadows, negotiating rocky or glacier slopes to see the floral buds opening for only one night in their natural habitat once a year before the Sharat Purnima. So imagine the hunger in their waiting to stumble upon this treasure. And imagine my crest year of blind joy when I got to see the bloom in my terrace of Bangalore in late August this year. While sharing this poignant experience with you all, I will make your wait worthwhile by sharing some interesting and lesser known mythological stories about the legendary Brahma Kamal, along with everything that you wish to know about its door shaped petals and alabaster skin. But first thing first, how that flower whose side profile you have seen in the beginning can be Brahma Kamal? when we all have seen that Brahma sitting on a pink lotus throne in religious drawings? Some people indeed believe that the aquatic lotus plants of Nilumbo Nucifera, which is basically the Indian national flower, is the Brahma Kamal. But Brahma Kamal is actually that lotus from which the creator of cosmos was imagined to be born after the flower bloomed from the navel of Lord Vishnu at the very dawn of creation. That's why Lord Vishnu is also known as Padmanav. Look at the lotus color in this image for instance, with just a shade of pink. But all these fanciful stories don't make any logical sense, right? How come Vishnu was around then before the creation? Well, according to Vishnu Puran, when Shiva destroys, Vishnu never dies even after complete pralaya or devastation. To continuously keep the cycle of destruction and recreation going, Vishnu has to resurrect the cosmos every time by birthing Brahma from his belly. Hmm, well, highly imaginative, huh? Quite ludicrous under the radar of science. What say? It 
it's uncanny, if not almost unbelievable, that this is the flower that I have seen in my dream first for almost two years ago. I haven't studied about the flower. I haven't seen it then for real. Of course, I must have heard it from somewhere for it to place a hold in my subconscious. But even though I don't remember whether the flower that I have seen in my dream resembles to the real Brambakamal or not, but in 2020, during one afternoon siesta, I had this dream where my mother was showing me one giant flower which she identified as Brambakamal in the dream. And there was a dew on top of that flower through which I could see map. And for some unknown reason, that time I made a note of Russia in the dream journal app. Almost six, seven, six to seven years ago, I have started doing active interest in dream interpretation. And since then, I picked up some books to study about dream. And so I used to, you know, whenever I used to get up from a REM sleep, after a vivid dreaming, I used to scribble. And then once my sleep sunken eyes is gone, I used to properly make a note. So it feels surreal that the flower that I have seen in my dream for the first time uh, actually have seen the blooming years down the line. It, it, even, you know, as and when I'm now also telling you, it's just giving me goosebumps. And I want to pass on that goosebumps to you by sharing an even more gripping story, which creates maximum mystique around Brahma Kamal. Amit's rhododendron cover, a beautiful Himalayan monan, was admiring its multicolored plumage at the onset of twilight. An unworldly violet golden light enveloped the grassy slopes of forest as the bird fanned its feather while bobbing its head crest. Suddenly, it got startled at a weeping sound. After afternoon shower, Himalaya was looking like a sacred place of pilgrimage for all the world, while sun remained busy to properly place color on this canvas. Draupadi said that evening with a short squall, Look Bhima, the blisters have vanished and my feet aren't sore anymore. As Pandavas about to stop their laborious climb in the mountain by following the forest trail, Bhima ran towards the cave to satiate his giant appetite and couldn't hear his Panchali, the wife and queen of the five Pandava brothers and daughter of King Draupad, who ruled over Panchali in the ancient Indian epic Mahabharata. She accompanied her husbands during their 12 years of exile in Vanavas and one year of Agathivas after Dudhishthi lost against Kauravas and succumbed to Shakuni's deceit in the game of dice and gambling. Many this event brought to Draupadi caused her major distress. She felt often mentally tormented by memories of grave insults received in Kaurava's courtroom. And on top of that, the hardship of a forest life was adding to her pain. But that evening, the air became redolent 
as if a certain fragrance from Devaloka made the valley joyous, while birds and trees became all alight with sweet songs. Draupadi followed the strong scent across meadows and became joyous when she found that her guess was right. It was coming from that astonishingly beautiful lotus she saw some time back. But lotus is usually pink, at times white, rarely blue, which grows naturally only in Himalaya, while Draupadi described this flower as shimmering silver. What sacrifice? A child who was born from the womb of fire, a queen who had to embrace poverty, a woman who met with beastly treatment and used as a pawn in the larger political sweepstakes, nobody knew that Draupadi was in no mood for sacrifice.
Why speak about Macabar while talking about a flower which is not only venerated in Hinduism but also considered as Dasavatara, the flower of all flowers in Buddhism? For beauty is nothing but the beginning of terror that we are still able to bear. And we revere it so because it calmly disdains to destroy us. It's not only the German poet Rilke who equated terror with beauty like this, but a similar occurrence has been found in Yeats' writing too, when he said, All changed, changed utterly. A terrible beauty is born. If you like the heartfelt effort that I put into making this video, show your appreciation by sharing, commenting, liking, and subscribe to Out of the Den because then only YouTube will recommend my channel to more people. Because you know, I didn't want to show you yet another aesthetically pleasing Brahmakamal blooming video. I wanted you to connect with nature so intimately that you can get the sublime power of beauty to both destroy and transcend us when facing our fear of the grand infinite. Because what I experienced for those two nights with three birds blooming on 29th and one remaining on the night of 30th August cannot be described without intrusiveness of these paradoxical aspects of beauty. A heavenly ambience truly got created in this terrace during the bloom, as if suddenly I stumbled upon this fantastical world, witnessing pure fragility at its most raw and exposed, and waiting for the birds to reap away the veil so that I get to look at its terrible naked beauty right in the face. A single petal of this flower has been found to contain more than one billion atoms. Brahma Kamal Bloom was as much shocking as it was captivating for me because while gifting me this plant, my friend who nurtured this plant from the very beginning and had it in her garden for many years, told me that this shall bloom in the next blooming cycle, which would be the next year. So when the first bird came out after three weeks of having this plant, I ran into disbelief. I have never seen this flower before, so tried to convince myself that probably the edges of the leaves were changing color and shape as we notice for some plants. Now here comes the confusion. Since the flowers that are endemic to Hemkund Valley look somewhat different, with its scientific name being Sosiera of Valata, some people believe that the queen of the night is not Brahmakamal. I think it's the cactus status that breaks. That's why some botanists call this as Dutchman's pipe cactus or orchid cactus. Similarly, if you look at the cover of Padma Purana, you will see that the regular Indian lotus has been given the status of Brahmakamal. I think part of the confusion is because random usage of common names. All night blooming cacti are called queen of the night because, well, public demand I guess. Now if I consider the botanist word as the final, 
This flower remotely doesn't match with the one Vishnu holding on his hand while creating another one as depicted in Vishnu Purana. And then it doesn't fit into Draupadi's shimmering silver and description of heavenly fragrance either because visitors reported Hemkund's Brambhakamal as the one having highly unpleasant odour upon opening of petals. Now it's easier to imagine where from this legend got created that Draupadi's blisters magically vanished that evening after watching Brahma Kamal. Since ancient time, this was extensively used as a medicinal herb. Ecstasy plucking due to its religious significance and wish fulfilling aspects, over harvesting due to usage in traditional medicines coupled with global warming and human encroachment caused major shrinkage of its natural habitat. So this plant is now endangered mostly due to anthropogenic pressure on the species. Just goes to show, we don't even spare what we emphatically attribute to God's own. But there's no dearth of remarkable tales and practices around it. In a unique journey of faith, devotees make an arduous trek to the Namik Hiramani glaciers about a week before Nandashtami, and they trek for about a week to climb to the Nandadevi Kund to get this rare favorite flower of goddess. Considered as Shiva's consort, Nanda Devi is another manifestation of Goddess Parvati and an avatar of Durga. Similarly, Brahma Kumari, another incarnation of Goddess Durga, is also associated with Brahma Kamal. Of course, it has to be the favorite flower of Durga too. After all, it saved the life of his son. When Shiva put an elephant's head on Ganesha's body as a desperate damage control measure after decapitating his head in anger, and Ganesha didn't wake up, his wife Parvati threatened to annihilate the universe. Then Lord Brahma was summoned who bathed the lifeless body with water sprinkled from his Brahma Kamal. Little Ganesha revived. That's why mythology claims that this plant is life restoring. Well, even though there's lack of proper clinical research, medical science acknowledges that the stain actually can heal cardiac affections. It's curious to note that what appears as completely fictional on the surface almost always has some hidden underlying facts and reasons, at times just, just a grain of it. But what our logical minds tend to think as totally baseless, they may not be so. I would say it's healthy if part of our brain remains untamed and not subjugated by typical rigid logic. 
we can benefit from keeping that part open to possibilities for staying connected with all that's inexplicable and mysterious about our life and the universe. That part of me was overflowing with gratitude for generous nature, the part of me that is free to traverse between dream and miracle. How else are we going to appreciate the sacred geometry of nature? Because nature has both mathematics and aesthetics merged into holy sublime, one never questioning the other, which one is truer or bigger. So even if you are an atheist but get tired by the awe, mystery and wonder of the spectacle, then you too believe in something inscrutable. You just prefer not to look at it with a humanized version of creator. But it's impossible to be dispassionate in front of Brahma Kamal if you are alive in the true sense. As evolutionary biologist and atheist Richard Dawkins so wonderfully wrote in his book, Unweaving the Rainbow, we are going to die and that makes us the lucky ones. Most people are never going to die because they are never going to be born. And what about the one who was born from the fire's womb? It's equally inexplicable that every year we conveniently worship divine feminine with pomp and grandeur and treat women on the ground equally shabby. Not many are aware of this and that's why we see this occasional argument in social platforms about this is the real world, this is not. Botanists actually recognize that there are altogether 31 varieties of the species and all of them can technically jostle for this claim to fame. Nobody knows for sure which flowers should get the unanimous status of Brahma Kamal. As to my mind, they all are beautifully divine and perhaps this confusion and difference of opinions act to its aura. But yes, I still remember. I remembered that while watching the flowers in my terrace bloom, at one point, I was complaining, why there's no scent? I heard about nice smell, but I'm not getting a whiff. She heard, nodded in the breeze a little while more, and lo behold, the first rush of that fragrance inside my mind made me feel that only the Creator could have possibly crafted this while sitting on a meditative pose to create this universe. Anything that creates a spontaneous leap of faith for you, for me, that's Brahma Kamal.